Okay, so let's move on. Um, what? Let's see. What are we going to talk about next? Do we want? Do you want to do Carnival of Souls? Are you good for that? Next. I'm good for Carnivals of Souls. Carnivals of Souls. Actually, Carnival of Souls. We're being silly. Um, so Sarah watched this a while ago, and then mm -hmm. it was on the list for me to watch, and I finally got to it yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. And Carnival of Souls is from 1962. It predates Night of the Living Dead, but if you've seen Night of the Living Dead, you can think of that while we talk about this. If you've seen Night of the Living Dead and haven't seen Carnival of Souls, it's the closest thing I can think to. Or if you've seen like schlocky, like 50s monster movies, those are kind of have a similar feel. It's a, a horror movie, I guess. It, mm -hmm. It's kind of psychological horror almost more than it is horror horror. Mm -hmm. uh, it was definitely, the version I saw was definitely restored and I was really grateful. It looked really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and it has, it has a cult, as far as I could tell, I didn't read all of the Wikipedia, but there is a cult following or was a cult following. And now it seems to be a movie that is generally well thought of to some degree, not necessarily like it's a great movie, but like it has a place in culture and is kind of a part of 60s, the 60s horror that is in the same realm as Night of the Living Dead or something. Right, but Night of the Living Dead is, is about zombies, and yes. there are no zombies. In There's Carnival no zombies here. It's just, it's kind of of that same, like we're transitioning out of 50s, where we're transitioning into a different kind. Like this is in between, you know, this is in between monster movies and like 70s slashers. It's almost like we're this era. I mean, there's more well, to it than that, but. I think, so like, we watched Attack of the Crab Monster, so that's like yeah. 19, that's the late 50s. Yeah. So I, I would say that we're transferring more from like monster horror into like the 70s is more, really, yeah. is more, Maybe slashers is the 80s. Anyway. Slashers is the end of the 70s. So I, I, I don't know, the 70s to me, the, you know, you have like the omen, you have some religious stuff you have. And there's actually um, some religious stuff too, Carnival of Souls. Again, to reminder to everybody, we're spoiling Carnival of Souls. Uh, it's um, free to watch in a ton of places. Like this, I don't, I think there's like very little copyright on this movie or something. I don't know, but it's so free to watch Exorcist everywhere. So The Exorcist is 1973. So if we're gonna talk, right. like that's the big, and that's, you know, I guess it's, it's demonic possession kind of yeah. stuff, religious horror, so on. But yeah, so this is, this is, a, so, my, so do you want to go first on this? I went first on Star Trek. You go first on this. Um, so there's, there's a, a genre of horror, or horror fiction called weird fiction or weird horror or something like that, you know, that has yeah. like um, H.P. Lovecraft and. I like weird uh, horror. We both like yeah. weird horror. Yeah. And, you know, it's probably my favorite because I don't find monsters very scary. Right. Um, I, I mean, it, it, I find monsters scary the way I find bears scary. If if I actually see one near me, that is scary as hell. But like, it, it doesn't intellectually like. There's no fear to it. Um, and um, religious horror. I'm not religious. That doesn't really do much for me. I mean, The Exorcist is cool. Anyway, this is all say weird horror to me is very vague and it's it's psychological, but it, it's very. It's like you a don't. It doesn't yeah. exist in reality, and it probably could never, but the idea of it is interesting because they're sort of playing outside that box, maybe. Well, H.P. Lovecraft went on to do cosmic horror, yeah, which is literally like sci-fi horror where, where something yeah. from space is kind of, you know, interacting. Weird fiction feels like you're dealing with an alien situation on the planet without right. any sci-fi aspects. And so yeah. I, it's hard to find. And Carnival of Souls, you never really quite know what's happening. And it's, it's all atmosphere and it's all things happening that you don't know for sure what's happening. It's all suggestion, it's all things you don't see. And that is my favorite kind of thing because the minute you see the thing, the minute you see the lady with the long fingers and the mouth that goes, uh, it's like, I've seen that <laughs> nine million times. I don't care. It's not interesting. The unknown is the scariest thing to me. Yeah. It's, this is a movie where like there are scary designs, but not like the moment you see the monster, it's not scary. 
unless mm-hmm. the point of the movie is that the monster is just sort of there and it's not meant to be shock value monster it's not meant to be that kind of monster like there are scary things in this that you could have left you know in carnival of souls that you didn't have to show up mm-hmm. close and personal but they do and that mm-hmm. sort of takes away that shock value and that like here's a scary unknowable monster it's more like here's a thing and you're seeing it now think about it <laughs> which is a different brand of horror than you know not yeah. that i mean that's that's i'm i'm reducing carnival of souls a little bit here but that's a different way of doing things than where you don't show the monster and aliens. And that's because the, it's, you want the monster to have a certain shock value and a certain unknowability to it, maybe. Well, and you know, I like the woman going crazy genre, which isn't necessarily a horror genre. It tends to be more like drama. Yeah. There's some, there are horror aspects to it. And I yeah. guess Carnival of Souls falls into that, that kind of a yeah b- bucket for, I keep saying where, I could see you you lose like um Night of the Living Dead, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Those are all like they have bigger societal things to say. Yeah. Carnival of Souls doesn't have anything bigger to say societally, but it's very personal to me because it's like a woman having these strange experiences and they seem to only be happening to her and it's very isolating and it's very alienating. And and yet they're feasible. Like I've, I, I can't remember for sure, but doesn't she see someone in the back of her car? Like, uh, it's outside of her. It's on the. It's outside of her window. Like, yeah. As if they were hanging onto their car or something. Her car or something almost. Right, but as a as as a woman, and and I'm sure I wouldn't be surprised if men have had that. You you sometimes get in your car and you're like, did I? Is there someone? You know, you you think there might be someone behind you and. Yeah most of the time there isn't I'm sure it's happened to someone but in general you know and it's that kind of like that kind of stuff and it's very cheap like you know people don't make movies like that with big budgets because it what would you do well it's it is not common for people to make movies like that with a big budget like Midsummer is not a woman going crazy movie but it has a lot of elements of like how Florence Pugh is dealing with things. It right. is focused on her in a way. And horror is one of the only genres where I think you might, as we say, well, no, I don't know. It, it's, yeah. I think something like Midsummer, like there are movies like that, like that has a budget. It's not yeah. a huge budget, but it's a budget. And I feel like there must be some, but you're right, it is not common. Like it's not, we don't make these movies like more movies get made or something. Yeah, yeah. but even like The Endless has a lot of like suggestions of what's happening rather yeah. than seeing what's happening because they don't have the budget for yeah. that. So that's why I like Carnival of Souls. I can't think of a lot of other movies. You know, it's not like slashers. There's There's dozens and dozens of slashers. There's dozens and dozens of monster horror. There's lots of demonic possession movies. There's um, something on a spaceship even has more movies, you know, haunted yeah. house movies. You know, you, you can find... There's never been a really popular version of this because that's how you get that. Like, Alien was popular. And then, I mean, I'm sure there was, maybe there was a movie before that. But like, Alien was popular, and so I think we have Alien to thank for the amount of horror that comes after it, where there's something on a ship and it's scary, right? Yeah. Like, The Exorcist was popular, like right. really popular, and now we have demonic possession as a sub genre. Halloween made so much money, and now yeah. and there was just a million copies. Actually, I would say the thing now, because you really do. That's that's creature horror. Sorry, that's body yeah, creature, creature horror. Yeah, creature horror is popular, kind of. I mean, really, we have Frankenstein or something to think because of creature horror almost. It's, it's maybe, maybe you need to go past that to a different kind of creature, but like those movies in the 30s feel like the precursor to like creature horror and monster movies. And you know, I'm not being, I think Carnival of Souls falls onto the women going crazy thing. And, and I think there are probably more movies like that that I'm giving, they can be really badly done. Yeah. A lot of stuff like that involves someone not remembering something, which is right. just like the lamest. I have I have two points, and I'm going to do them in reverse order how I usually do this. So the stuff I liked before I get to the <laughs> stuff I kind of did, but is is what you're talking about. It's the woman going crazy, but more than that, I actually really liked our main character because it's 1962 is when this movie came out comes out, and it's not like our female character is super woke or this is a feminist movie or something, but 
she actually she does things and it matters <laughs> like mm -hmm. you you get horror movies slashers and stuff like it happens more in horror earlier than it does in other movies maybe where like you get a female character and she makes choices and they matter like she gets to be the driving force in the story like there's a whole discussion about how women in their own movies don't always get to be the driving force of change and plot. Once they do, they often get punished for it. Right. <laughs> Which it's is been on my mind lately. <laughs> it's been a, refer to Instagram and Simone C Signore. I don't know how to say her name. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and this is a movie where she makes choices and they, they matter. Like she gets to, the, she is the driving force of what is happening in the narrative. And mm -hmm. like, it's a horror movie, so like, you know, we can discuss the way her, the, the way she meets her end and, and all of that. Like, it isn't a happy ending exactly, but it's not really put, it, this doesn't feel as weird as like Simone Signore and how her characters are dealt with the way you describe it. I haven't seen these movies. but Which is like, that she's a strong woman who usually gets everything she get, wants taken away from her at the end. Right, and whereas Carnival of Souls is like, it's a horror movie, so it's, yeah. it's about kind of things being weird and it's not about a strong woman getting all the things yeah. taken away from her it's about an independent woman like she's yeah. more independent like she doesn't like like and this is a part that i think you like and that i like and that you haven't maybe talked about tons but she doesn't like interacting with other people she is a loner and it is yeah. not okay for women to be loners in movies it just yeah. never is you, you it is so rare that you find women loners in movies obviously more as time goes on, and it does happen, but it is not common, and I really yeah. would like it. And you don't, see, and if you see a gamer chick in a movie, she's going to be hot and attractive, and she's going to use her wiles on the boys or something. Well, like and usually loner women need to learn that they actually need people in their they, lives. Yeah, or stuff and like it's that. like it's so annoying. And this movie doesn't try to do that, and it's nice because she just gets to not be interested in other people, and she's a, a an organist. She plays a church, you know. She plays organs and she's gonna go play an organ for a church but she's not religious and like i also like that aspect to it where she's like i just have a career but i'm not interested in like this stuff around it like there's mm -hmm. there's a weird like i would be interested in someone who knows more about feminist theory and criti feminist critical theory discussing this movie and i haven't had time because i only watched it yesterday but i'm even going to look some of that stuff up because it just weirdly feels like you don't see her kind of character that often yeah get to be the main character and make choices and it not really be about other people. Like it really is just about her and mm -hmm. it's about this weird thing. And I even think there is, you said there isn't something big going on around it necessarily, but I do think it is critiquing intentionally or not some of how society deals with women, but also like religion and like, there's a thing about religion in there and like, she's not religious and that might be a part of why this is happening. Mm -hmm. Weirdness. Anyways, that's just a thought for me. But then, my second part about this, which I'll be shorter, is when I was looking this movie up uh, to, for where to watch, it had a riff tracks, and I was like, oh, does that mean this is a bad movie Sarah liked? I don't remember her saying that. And so I watched it, and it's not a bad movie, although you can totally do a riff track, not that all riff tracks are about bad movies either, but yeah. it's not a bad movie, but this is low budget. The difference between Samurai Cop and like, I don't know, you know, uh, the Endless or Watermelon Woman or something is probably just a little bit of money and a little bit of know-how. Cause like Samurai Cop, like the framing is terrible. Everybody's head is in like the bottom left of the frame for no reason. And then like Watermelon uh, Woman and like The Endless, of course, like these are movies where there's really well thought out stories and characters and all that. And Samurai Cop has none of that. And Carnival of Souls has a few moments that could fit into <laughs> a Samurai Cop movie where like, our doctor is sitting in a chair and we just see the back of his chair and it's like she's talking, our main character is talking to the doctor and then it turns, then we get a wide shot and the doctor character turns to um, her and is like, sorry, you got my back. I was writing something down, except he's sitting at a desk where he could have been writing it down and not writing it. And, but whatever, it was just one of those moments where it's like, I guess he wasn't on set that day. They needed the shot and they just didn't have it. Who knows? Yeah. Um, and so it's like, there's moments like that and then the audio isn't synced properly. I, you know, I don't really know what the issue is there. There's, if it's ADR or how it is, but there's places where, you know, the audio just isn't working. And there's uh, an aspect to it where like, they're acting, I, I'm, this, I have a theory and it's probably wrong, but like, 
in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, there's that mid-Atlantic dialect or tone or whatever um, mm -hmm. that people would talk in. And it was used in movies a lot, or at least the way people talked in movies wasn't how people talked in real life. And this is the 60s, which means more movies, movies, the studio system is failing and other people are making movies because they could, you know, just people who weren't a part of studios necessarily. And so this feels like the way they're acting belongs in the 50s or 40s, but the movie sort of belongs in like the 60s and 70s because it's like you have more movement, you have outdoor stuff where it's like a person with a camera and it's just people shooting, like they didn't get permits for this. It's just them running around with a camera and an actress and like that kind of stuff which you don't get as much in the earlier decades. And so it like doesn't fit that they're acting that way, but the movie feels this way. Well, is, yeah. are you saying the acting's very stiff? Well, that too. Like it's, it's stiff and not very good anyways, except for a weirdly the Reverend character I thought was fine. But like it's the line deliveries aren't very good anyways. Like none of these people seem like, I don't know if they went on to acting careers or not. So there's that. But on top of that, it feels like they're, being dramatic and the style of the acting belongs in the 40s and 50s but the way the film is shot is we're getting closer to like shooting on the street and this focus on realism sometimes which right is more something that so you're saying it, it has it a naturalistic look but a a, a a very formal acting style yeah essentially roughly That's roughly well and it's worth saying the director this is his only feature film he ever did uh feature length fiction film he was a um an industrial filmmaker, I think, like Altman yeah. started. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyways, that's what I have for for the Carnival of Souls. It was interesting. I, you know, as much as I got a little thrown out of the movie by those weird moments, I also really enjoyed a lot of it, and I want to learn about it. So that's what I got. You got anything else? Or are you good? I really like it, but it is what it is, and and I agree. You know, I would agree with that. Yeah. 